851, turn right, heading 180. 014 Papa, turn right 245, report localised established. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. I hope you all are doing very well today. In this video, as promised, I'll be discussing the, the future of Airbus. In an earlier video, I discussed the future of Boeing, and a card will be placed in the top right of your screen if you're interested in hearing about that. However, today's focus will be on Airbus. In this particular video, I'll discuss the Beluga XL, the A350-1000 potential stretch, the A380+, Plus middle of the market airliners, the A320neo, and a whole lot more. So strap yourselves in as it should be a good video. We begin today with the A350-1000 and its potential stretch. The A350-2000, A350-1000 ULR has been something that's been talked about for quite a while now. The stretch of the A350-1000, as Airbus says, would allow it to better compete with the 777X series, which is set to launch with customers in 2020. If released, this aircraft could be a perfect alternative to carriers who did not want to operate Boeing's 777X, rather an Airbus alternative, and we do see this happen because of relationships. However, in regards to the launch, there have been a couple of issues that have arisen. For example, engine choices have been something that Airbus has continued to study, but has struggled to find the perfect alternative for. The business case has also been something that Airbus has continued to study over the years. The reason for this? While they have the A350-1000 on offer, which is a stretch of the A350-900, if Airbus launched their extended Dash 1000, the concern would be that it would take away the need for an A350-1000 very simply. And this is purely because airlines would have the ability to purchase a longer one with more capacity, which in turn may be better for their operations. Airbus would need to closely plan their ULR variant in order to execute it so perfectly that airlines could still choose between the A350-1000 and the A350-1000 ULR. Will this actually occur in the future though? It's certainly possible as throughout this year talks have continued to emerge, but it is looking more and more likely that the focus for Airbus will remain on improving their current two main variants, the A350-900 and the A350-1000. Let's now talk the A321neo family, or just the A320neo family in general. This series of aircraft is one that has thrived in recent years. The A320CO is an extremely successful aircraft, and the A320neo is also that. The growth in the industry and the demand for single aisle jets has meant that more and more carriers have moved to the A320neo and aircraft alike because of its affordable price and what it really offers carriers in the long run. There's also the Airbus A321neo, A321LR, A321 Airbus Cabin Flex, which I could certainly vouch for and say has probably the most potential among the Airbus aircraft in 2018, as you've just heard from all the variants that are on offer. This aircraft has the possibility of multiple new variants being introduced for different types of things. The A321 is known for being in the middle of the market and is a section of the industry which is in high demand always. Currently, while Boeing analyzed the business case for their own middle of the market airliner, Airbus continued to lead the way with their own A321. Recently, the A321 LR completed a non stop flight between Paris and New York and redefined the means necessary for transatlantic services, which are currently operated with the likes of the 787, 747, A380, 777, 767, and so on. This new aircraft, in turn, means even budget carriers can dip into this market, putting the pressure on already established carriers that favour capacity over aircraft size. For example, while not relating to the A321 LR, we've seen Norwegian take a large chunk of the market for flights between London and North America, purely because of their attractive prices and service in comparison to the rapidly deteriorating British Airways. While the Airbus A321 LR is certainly the future, the A321 XLR may also be. This aircraft is currently being studied by Airbus and is purely being studied and proposed to compete with the Boeing NMA, dubbed to be the 797. Essentially, if Airbus was to launch this, they'd still be 3-4 to four up on Boeing, with the A321 LR, A321neo, Airbus Cabin Flex, and now the A321 XLR, while Boeing would just have the sole two variants for their 797. But how would the A321 LR, or other variants included, help change Airbus in the long run? 
Well, it's quite simple, and it does revolve around the purpose of the aircraft itself. The A321 will help connect secondary hubs that aren't connected at the moment, while also being placed on other important routes for airlines. With airlines operating between new destinations, other airlines may see the growth of rivals and want a piece of the cake, as they do say. In turn, sales for this aircraft, or aircraft alike, will be given a very important boost. I've spoken for a few minutes now on the A320 family, so let's now move on to the Beluga XL, the aircraft which helps transport parts for this series of aircraft. The Beluga XL is the future of Airbus in regards to the development of all their important aircraft. Stats already show that the current Belugas are being pushed to their absolute limit, with them flying every single day continuously. Why is this though? Well, it's because of the demand for Airbus aircraft. The Beluga XLs will have improved technology and will be operating for at least five years hand in hand with the older versions, which in turn will mean Airbus can meet all their deadlines in regards to the delivery of their aircraft, and more specifically, that's the A320 Neo family. This comes after airlines put their faith in the aircraft and the backlog for delivery continues to grow. With the engine difficulties that Airbus have faced with their Pratt and Whitney engines, it has meant a delay that has been put in place for deliveries of this aircraft. But in saying that, orders are still coming through and it is a race against the clock. And this Beluga XL will in fact do them a perfect job. Staying on the topic of larger aircraft, we'll move on to the Airbus A380 and the Airbus A380 Plus, and the future of the two aircraft. We'll start with the A380, the classic version, also known as just the A380-800. It has always been hoped that this A380 would still be getting continuous orders, even now in 2018. However, Emirates, the largest operator of this aircraft, are really the only thing standing between production closing. Airbus visited China during a trade mission with the goal of selling more A380s. However, this was unsuccessful. At the 2018 Farnborough Air Show, no orders were sadly pulled in, and in 2018, it's only been Emirates with the new orders. This has meant slowly but surely the A380 has faded away from the spotlight, until a few months ago, when Highfly took delivery of their first A380, courtesy of Singapore Airlines. This move from Highfly has given the A380 a new purpose, and quite an odd one for that matter, as it's something Airbus may not have seen possible so quickly. The future of the A380 is in leasing and second-hand operations, and it is very funny to say this sort of thing. Through Highfly taking on board the A380, it does mean it will operate on routes it's potentially never done before with standard airlines, and will also see it operate with airlines that we haven't seen operate an aircraft of the A380's size. Take, for example, Norwegian, who just used it on the Gatwick to New York route, and while that didn't exactly go according to plan, it was still pretty cool to see them with an A380 for that selected time period. The second-hand market is also a big thing for Airbus. After all, Emirates don't like their fleet being old, and are already looking at offloading their oldest A380s, which aren't actually that old in the grand scheme of things, when their new batch comes in. This new batch will, this new batch will be arriving in the coming years. But these aircraft are still too young to send to the scrap and this is where airlines like British Airways come into the mix. This carrier, as we know, has eyed adding more A380s for some time now, but was always put off by the price, and I'd say they really weren't the only ones that were put off by the price. Taking the aircraft for a cheaper price, second hand, may just be the perfect move for them. The A380 Plus discussion means we are now closing in on the completion of this video. This particular topic is one of great interest to me, purely because it is meant to be the future of the Airbus A380. In saying that, it hasn't really planned out like that. Essentially, the A380 Plus is an improved A380 with enhanced features and winglets, and that's really the notable difference. This A380 Plus will supposedly make the A380, on a whole, more attractive to new customers. However, to date, it's really gained no firm interest. A more telling tale is that their largest customer, Emirates, chose the A380-800, not the A380 Plus, in their most recent order, which only occurred a few months ago. The future for this particular upgrade, or aircraft, as they say, isn't too bright in my opinion. Our final topic is the A220, the former C-Series aircraft, which did recently join Airbus under a rebrand. This aircraft slots into the regional market sector, with its smaller seat options currently not found on any other aircraft. What does it mean for Airbus, though? 
Well, it means in turn they will be able to offer a regional aircraft. That's purpose is different to the likes of the A320neo. This aircraft is already being targeted at operations throughout America, specifically operations in North America. Airbus hopes that this particular aircraft will replace aircraft like the E-190s and even the older A320COs. With new orders coming in recently from JetBlue and Moxie Airways, it does appear that the future for this aircraft, the latest addition to Airbus, is very bright, especially in the North American sector. I'd like to thank you very much for tuning into this video of mine. If you have any thoughts on the future of Airbus, please don't hesitate to let me know. And if you did enjoy this video, feel free to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Race all of these broken dreams and flight And we'll fly